Amen. He's taking care of his second ministry, right? First ministry, Jesus. Second ministry, his family. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty, mighty God. Isn't he so good? I mean, how awesome. It's Friday night. It's almost 730 and we're in the house of God. You're hungry and thirsty to be in the house of God. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a radical thing. You could have done so many things on a Friday night, but you're hungry for eternity. You're hungry for eternal things. You're hungry for things that will last forever. That's actually going to profit your soul. That's not going to uh, just you know, pass away one day, some temporal, carnal, natural thing. It's actually going to make a difference in your life for the rest of the night and tomorrow and the next day. And it's actually going to make heaven on that day. It's not going to burn up like so many of the other things you probably did with your day to day. And in Jesus' name, and Jesus' name, it wasn't that way. But just saying, you know something that's going to have eternal value, something that's going to make heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. I love the power of the Holy Ghost. I love the power of the, the, the anointing. It's without the power of the Holy Spirit, without the anointing, every word we speak are just words. They're words, they're words, they're words. How many places, how many places around, around the earth this Sunday did a man get up in a podium and no manifestation of the Spirit happen, no, no full gospel as the, the word declares it should be preached happened. It was a man speaking to men. It was man communing with man. It wasn't the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't candlestick of the Lord. It was a Christian fantasy. They played Christian fantasies. They had, they, had, they had church. They weren't the church. They had church. The Lord's been ministering to me so, late, so much lately on, is what I have Christian fantasy or is what I have reality? Is the, what the Bible says a reality in my life or am I playing Christian make-believe? It, at what point do we, we, we realistically look at our lives and say, no, my life really doesn't look like that. And I'm either going to go on in my Christian fantasy and say it does and just everything's okay. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to identify those things in my life that no, that's not happening in my life. No, that doesn't look like the ministry of Jesus. No, it doesn't look that way. And you're going to make a change. And you're going to cry out to God. You're not going to fix it yourself, but you're going to cry out to God and begin to say, oh God, i got to have your life manifest in my life. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go around all day long saying I'm a Christian, saying I'm a believer, saying I'm a saint, but my life doesn't reflect sainthood, but my life doesn't reflect the life of Jesus. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to play Christian make-believe. I'm not going to have a Christian fantasy. I got to have reality. I got to have it. I'm about to get on a plane in, in less than two weeks and go to Africa for three weeks and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And everything I read about the gospel of Jesus Christ, being full, preached fully according to Jesus, according to Paul, was a gospel preached with signs and wonders and miracles. Where the Lord kept working with them with signs and wonders and miracles. They didn't go out and preach information. They, they preached a, a demonstration. It was a manifestation. It was, a, it, was, it was genuine salvation that brought change. And there was proof. And there was proof Amen. in the words. Signs following. The Lord kept working with them with signs following. With signs following. At what point is our lives exactly like the Bible? How hungry, how thirsty are we for it to be so? How hungry, how thirsty are we for it to be so? Or is it okay that it's not? If it's okay that it's not, then it won't. If it's okay that it's not like the life of Jesus, then it won't be like the life of Jesus. And you'll be a baby your whole life and you never go on with God. You die that way. It's a tragic thing. It's a tragedy. Not me. Not going to be that way. Today as I prayer to I today as I, I went to the throne room and I, I cried out to God. It was so oh God, let these, things, let these things manifest in my life. Let, let me fully preach the gospel. Let me fully Paul said I, I fully preach the gospel from Jerusalem to Illyricum with mighty signs and wonders. By the by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Spirit of God. This is what Paul said. I have fully preached it. If it can be fully preached, that means it can be preached when it's not fully preached. I don't want anything to do with that. If you can see it fully preached and you can see it preached, who wants just preached? I want fully preached. <laughs> I want the whole shebang. I want everything. I'm not, I'm not interested in living a Christian life if it can't look like the life of Jesus. I'm not interesting. I'm not interested in the idea of Jesus, the dangling carrot that I, leads me and guides me to heaven. I'll never be like him. I'll never have the power that overcomes and conquers. I'll never look like the life of Jesus. Nonsense. I'm not going to have that. I won't, I, that won't be me. 
If there's anything I can say about my Christian life from the day I said yes to Jesus, from the day I said yes to Jesus, I discovered the pearl of great price. I discovered it on that day. I got saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost almost 17 years ago. And my life was never the same. And it wasn't Christian fantasy. I grew up in religion. I grew up in religion. But when the power of the Holy Ghost came, Jesus came and manifested himself to me. He let himself be clearly seen by me, made himself real to me. John 14, 21, everything changed. Everything changed. There was no more pretend. It was reality. It was real. The life of God real. I wasn't consumed with my life anymore. I got poured out and Jesus got poured in. And my whole life I began to live and to move and have my being immediately. Day one in God. And I just stayed right there. Every day crying out to God. God, truth in the inward part, shine the flood light of heaven on my soul. Reality. My soul demands reality. If it's signs and wonders, then I gotta have signs and wonders. If it's freedom from sin, then I gotta be free from sin. Our souls have to demand reality. They can't be okay with not having it. Right now, you can identify things in your life right now, right now, that aren't scriptural, that don't line up with the word of God, that aren't like the life of Jesus. Right now, you can identify them. And we love you, but it's not okay. It's not okay for me. There's things I identify in my life that's got to change. Can't be that way. I mean, you step out in ministry, and you start declaring the works of Jesus. You start telling people, Jesus is going to show up. We better show up. The ministry of Jesus better show up. It's going to cause you to go to your knees real quick and see if you're living a Christian fantasy or if you've got some reality in your life. Or you need to press in for a little bit more. It's reality. It's easy when you ain't doing nothing. You don't need no anointing to press the buttons on your remote. You need a bag of chips and a Coke. That's what you need. You don't need the power of God. But if you're going to actually begin to step out and do the work, to even try to look like the life of Jesus, you're going to need some signs and wonders and miracles. You're going to need greater works. You're going to, you're going to need to do something that you can't do. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it as a mere man. You can't figure this one out. That's right. You ain't going to get there on your own. You go find this one on your knees, crying out to God. Saying, God, manifest in my life. That's where I am. I'm on my knees right now. And I'm on my knees right now. Crying out, God, manifest in my life. The ministry of Jesus in my life. The ministry of Jesus in my life. Does that steal my confidence for one second when I go to lay hands on the next person? Not at all. Jesus said to do it. I'm doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. I'll learn as I go. Best thing we could probably learn how to do is get ourselves in a situation and let God get us out. Just do a cannonball right in the big, fat middle of what God's doing. Don't worry if you don't know how to swim. Just jump in. Jump in. He'll teach you how to swim. You'll start by going, I'm drowning. Help. And your hand will go up and then he'll lift you up and then he'll teach you how to swim. But it's got to start somewhere. We want, it, we, want it, we want everything rolled out for us. We want it all. We want step one, two, three, four, five. Don't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. He's going to give you the next step. He's going to give you the next step. He's not going to give you two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't work that way. If you knew all the steps, you'd screw it up. You would. You'd try to figure it out. You'd plan it out. That's how we plan everything. We got a five-year plan. We got a five, you know, whatever. It doesn't work that way in God. It doesn't work that way in God. People I talk to in religious churches who are just like, well, you got to, you need to, you need to, you need to, uh, you need to be interpreting, brother, when you pray in tongues. I'm like, man, you don't even speak in tongues. You haven't taken step one. You want to do step two? It doesn't work that way. You're not obedient to the first part. You're never going to make the second part. You don't even, you don't even do that. You're not going to, you're never interpret. You got no shot. At least I got a shot. Same thing with healing, miracles, signs, wonders, the ministry of Jesus. You got to step out and do something. If you, want it to, if you want it to be fulfilled, if you want to see it in your life. Seeing great signs and wonders. I've seen them. But I'm going for the measure of the maturity, the fullness of Christ. I'm not lullabied to sleep and to think, and I got it, and I can sit around here for another 10 years. Not doing it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. My life's short. My life's a va- vapor. I got a very short time. I understand it. I've numbered my days. They're very short. They're very short on the earth. They're very short. I'm not going to stand there on that day and have, and have Paul and the other disciples and other men of God have walked before me who have stepped into this ministry testify against me. I ain't doing it. I'm not going to do it. And, and that's what we run the risk of. Not going to happen. When God has provided all these things for us. 
He's provided all of these things for us. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. What's it look like when God's with you? I mean, what does it look like when God is with you? Not, not based on what you think about it, your opinion and your experience and anything else extra biblical. What does it look like when God's with you? Well, Jesus defined it pretty clearly, what it looks like when God is with you. Paul defined it pretty clearly. What happens when you're empowered with the Spirit of God? I've fully preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Lyric with mighty signs and wonders by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Spirit of God. That's what happened. That's what was going on. Mighty signs, mighty wonders. Last thing Jesus said before he left the earth. Last Jesus said, go, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Everyone who receives it and is baptized will be saved. Everyone who doesn't will be damned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. And he lists them out for us. And then he went to heaven. And then he said at the right hand of God. And he said to him, and it says that the Lord kept working with them with mighty signs accompanying the word. The Lord kept working with them. What does it look like when the Lord's working with you? What does it look like when he's working with you in this context, in this context of ministering the gospel? Because I, look, you guys are hungry. You're here on a Friday night. I know you're interested in the life of Jesus and the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I know this. This is Friday night. This is the hungry bunch. This is the thirsty people. This is the ones who want to go on with God. Who are not going to, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Fully. We want the gospel fully. That's what we want. I mean, no pun intended, but we don't, we don't want to Mickey Mouse around. We love, we love our pastor. Disney. Ha. Hallelujah. I'm, a te- I'm not a teacher. I'm a preacher. <laughs> I'm a school of spirit. <laughs> it's going to be school of the preacher tonight. Hallelujah. This is what he's called us to. It's the life that he's called us to. Amen. Whatever version of life you think you've been called to, that you're sitting around deciding to, it's not it. That's the life of Jesus. That's the life of Jesus. You can't get there on your own. You can't get there on your own. Man, I preach in churches all the time, and I preach to a bunch of people who it's optional to touch heaven. It's optional to go on with God. It's optional to be in church. All options, options, many options on the table. This happened to be the night they showed up. They happened to do this. They happened in optional, continually optional. If it's option, if it's optional, you don't get it. You're not allowed to have it. You don't get it. If it's optional, it's got to be a desperation of your heart. I begin to tell these people about the woman with the issue of blood, where there's a room full of people or thousands of people around. And many people touched Jesus, but they stopped. Many people were touching him. And he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, There's, everybody's touching you. He said, no, 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 no. Somebody touched me. God continually shows us. He continually shows us there's a difference. There's a difference in the people who get something from God. There's a difference from the people who get the miraculous manifested in their lives. There's a difference in those people. You think about the, what is it, the Syrophoenician woman who he called the dog, Right? Called her a dog, man. Called a woman a dog. Jesus, sweet Jesus, loving Jesus, beautiful Jesus. Called her a dog. Said it's not right. It's not right to give the children's bread to the dogs. But this lady, hungry, thirsty, unwilling to go without. Jesus, sweet Savior, calls her a dog. She's unmoved. She goes, oh, Lord, but even the the crumbs that fall from the master's table, Lord, the dogs can to have these. She's like, fine, call me a dog. I want it anyway. That's what she said. We got those kind of examples of the Bible, the hungry and the thirsty. That's what we got. That's what we got. We got guys who are so desperate to have Jesus touch their friend that they'll get on a roof and they start breaking up somebody's roof. Don't tell me that was just some no big deal back then to break up somebody's roof. It's biblical days. It's a roof. It's somebody's house, man. Somebody going to be mad. They didn't care. They're breaking open the roof. There comes a point when you don't care anymore. You don't care anymore. You've moved past caring about all this natural, earthly, carnal, the things that would have held you back in the past, and you're like, enough is enough. Being the same ain't an option anymore. Enough is enough. And you start tearing up a roof. You start doing what it takes. Rending the heavens, as it were. You're on your knees. You're crying out to God. 
Jesus, there's got to be a change. There's got to be a difference. I don't want a life like the rest of the people. I'm not going after the American dream. I'm not storing up, building bigger barns, doing the next thing. I'm not doing I'm not. I'm, I'm a non-participator of that. If you decided to follow Christ, you've decided to follow Christ, why in the world would you not go all the way to the light? You're going to stop halfway. You can get stuck somewhere in the middle. You're going to get stuck. It just tongues. You're going to get stuck. I mean, we watch people all the time get stuck. You know, people get, I mean, mm, salvation is beautiful, but nonetheless, you can get stuck there and never go on and get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can stuck get baptized in the Holy Ghost and and never go on and never go on to other manifestations of the spirit. When that was just a doorway to the supernatural, that was just a gate. That was just the beginning. It was nothing. It was just a doorway that said, hey, access is being granted. So now go on. Now move forward. Now go on. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. God continually calls us onward. You know, he's always calling us onward. He's never saying, sit this one out. You understand that? That can become such a a normal thing to you. Not to sit this one out. A normal thing to go on with God, to always hear him calling you onward. To always hearing him to always hearing, okay, now let's do this. Now let's go on with God in this area. Now let's do this. And I want to teach you this. And now I want to do that. Waiting. All of creation is waiting for the sons of God to manifest on the earth. They're waiting for for the life of Jesus to manifest in the sons. They're waiting for someone to be the son, to be the daughter of the most high God, to step up and have all these things. Somebody's got to press in and have them. Clearly, they come with a cost. They come with a price or everybody would have them. Everybody would have them. There's a difference. There's a difference. Not everybody will. Not everybody will. Doesn't mean it's not available, but not everybody will. You kind of got to get to a point where you just decide if you're going to be one of those people. Just go ahead. Let Christian fantasies over reality check. I'm either going to one of those people, and this is what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to sit in church. I'm going to, have my, I'm going to do my church thing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to serve the best right where I am, uh, but I'm going to not going to go, I'm not going to go deeper. Even though I know I'm called to that, I'm not going to. You've got to make a conscious decision. At some point, you've got to make a decision. You've got to get real with yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself. I want the life and the ministry of Jesus. I want everything that he's called me to be in God. Or by nature of staying where you are, you choose. You choose. You choose. There's got to be some kind of movement. Something that moves you. Something that inspires you. That's my continual prayer. As I pray, I'm like, Lord, inspire me. Inspire me for this nation. Inspire me. Move on me. We read that scripture was written by men of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Moved on. Moved on. Not just a desire. I read Pastor, Pastor Mark, I think he either read it, wrote it, spoke it, something. It, not too long ago, he, he said, the proof of your desire is in your pursuit. The proof of it is in your pursuit. You could tell me you desire something all day long. The proof of your desire is in your pursuit. What do you pursue? I love, I love our pastor continually bringing us into a place where we have to quantify things, where we have to be rea- real with it. We have to measure it. We have to be able to say, I'm going after it. Well, how are you going after it? Okay, how are you going after it? That sounds good. Now, how are you going after it? What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, I want that. I need that. I need that in my life. I need that around me. That's why I go on, because I keep that around me. I'm not going to play games. I'm not going to do that. God calls us onward. I'm saying onward. I say I'm moving on. Say, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Let's go. We're so blessed in this place. You're so full of God, you don't even know it. You don't even know how full of God you are. You don't even know how full of the word of God you are. You don't even got to have any clue how much power you got on the inside of you right now. You have no idea. You got the power of God inside of you right now. And we're doing what? You've been given the power 
of the Holy Spirit, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you. Some of you just need to rise up. You just need to rise up. Put on your authority. Be endued with the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on and we'll take him off. It's like we don't let nobody take our righteousness from us. We don't let them take our boldness. We don't let them take our confidence or anything else. You'd be amazed what would happen if you just step up and put your chest out and believe God's going to do something. He'll do something. He'll actually do something. He'll actually do something. See so many miracles this last year, especially over the last number of months, just been pressing in for it. Just been pressing in for it because I wanted to fully preach the gospel. See beautiful manifestations of the Spirit. See many people come to Jesus, people baptized in the Holy Ghost. Seeing all, basically all nine gifts of the Spirit manifest in a meeting. But I want to see, I want to see more. When I'm looking at the life of Jesus, I'm not getting stuck there. I'm seeing beautiful things. People don't know. People don't even know. When you walk out of this place and you walk into the church and your mouth opens up and the fire of God gets to pour out, you recognize what you got in this place. But God's called us to still even more. I'm not getting stuck where I am. I'm going on with God. I'm going on. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to go on with God. A few years, you're not going to recognize me. A few years, I'm not going to recognize you because you're going to be so hungry and thirsty and you're going to move on with God. So submitted. Not walking around in no fear. And yes. I recognize that on the people of God. Oftentimes, there's this fear. There's this fear of how to flow. What should I do? What do I do? You know, if you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you put on boldness and confidence, all that goes away. It goes away. It disappears. You don't have to know what you're going to say. What you have to do is be endued with power from on high. That's what you have to do. Pastor Mark told me a long time ago, one night before I preached, he said, Kelly, it's not about what you know. He said, it's about the anointing of God in your life. It's not about what you know. He said, well, you've got to find all your wisdom and the power of a bloody cross. That's where you've got to find all your wisdom. It's not about what you know. It's not about all the scriptures you know because you're so smart and you've memorized them and you've just gone for it. Hey, we love the word. Come on now. We love studying the word. But it's not about what you know. Paul determined to know nothing. He determined to know nothing except Jesus and him crucified. Nothing. Nothing. That's a gospel that works. You don't need, they don't need all your revelation. They need the power of God. When I stand on a platform in Africa and I'm looking at a sea of thousands of people, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to preach the simple gospel message of Jesus Christ that any one of you could preach right now. And mighty signs and wonders are going to follow the preaching of the word because that's the gospel, because that's the full gospel. And I believe that for every meeting that we have in America too, for every single one of them, that's what we're called to. And I'm not concerned about anything else but tell, doing what Jesus told me to do and the ministry of Jesus showing up and me getting out of the way and stepping out of the equation so God can be God. That's it. It's all that matters. It's the only way our lives are going to count. Nothing else matters. This life of Jesus, this life of the Spirit, this life in God, this anointing that he's given us that teaches us all things, this anointing. Hallelujah. You learn so many things in the anointing. I can't even begin to tell you as you step out and you get bold, everything that you will learn, thing, everything you thought you had to know beforehand, you learn in it. You learn in the fight. You learn in the fight. They wax valiant in fight. You learn in the fight. You learn how to fight while you're fighting. You can practice all you want. You can get educated all you want, but you learn how to fight in the fight. Learn how to preach while you're in the preach, while you're preaching. Learn how to pray praying. That's how you learn these things. You don't sit back, learn it, and go do it. It's not how you've been educated in school. You're going to get all this education and it's going to be some real world, world experience. Certainly we've sat in the house of God. We've been matured. We've been grown. We've, gr we've grown. But there, there's something we all know that that real world, that real world experience, stepping out and stepping out and even in, in natural things can teach you far more than sitting in that, in that classroom. Same thing in God. You get out, you step out, you be bold and you just watch what God does. I learned more in the last Seven, eight months, man, I learned my whole life. Every Bible, uh, Bible school, 10 years in this crazy boot camp. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is more like Green Berets. Bible school is like boot camp. I'm telling you, the anointing will teach you all things. It'll teach you all things. You'll get out there and you'll learn yourself some stuff in God. 
You'll get over the fear and the timidity. You get over all the, everybody's staring at me. Uh, you'll get over all that. You get real comfortable. You get alone with Jesus. It's like, you know, right now I feel clothed. I feel clothed. I feel clothed with this anointing. I feel clothed with the mantle of heaven. I know what it feels like when God has control of my voice. I know what it feels like. Because I start moving crazy and I don't care. I know what it feels like. And God can have his way. God will tell you, he got to give you what to speak in that moment. It's not about all your well-crafted words. It's not about it. It's not about all that. Sometimes the Lord will give me something right before I walk on the, on the platform. Sometimes I'll walk into a school of the spirit and not know I'm preaching. But the Lord just teaches us that we always got a river and we can always yield to the spirit of God. Whether you're in the workplace, I used to do it in the workplace, or you're at the grocery store or where, wherever you are. I was, um, Lawrence and Crystal are here, no. I was with Lawrence and Crystal the other day and we were in a, we were in a, a parking lot and they were having a window replaced on the car. I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing one of their cars right now. And uh, <laughs> there's a guy working on the window and I, this guy walks by and um, he, he must have thought I was the guy working on the window because it was right by a mechanic's truck. He's like, hey, man, do you fix tires? And I'm like, I felt the spirit of God come on me. I said, yeah, I fix tires. And he's like, because otherwise I have to wait for my dad to come. It's going to be a long time. And, and uh, he's, he has this big dog with him. I'm petting his dog. And I said, I'll fix your tire. Where's your tire? So he wouldn't go over to his tire. I, he probably still thought I was the mechanic. I don't know. didn't matter. And so, but I felt the spirit of God. The Lord will come on you like this when you're sensitive to him, when you understand your purpose, when you're defined in him, when you're not thinking about, no, it's not what I'm doing right now. Right now we're getting something done. That's another department of my life where I minister. No, 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 it's my life. In him I live and I move and I have my being. It's everything. It's all consuming. It's consumed me everywhere. I love it. I love it. Spirit of the Lord comes up on you, turns you into another man. Maybe a, someone who's fixing a tire at the moment. But nonetheless, man, I'm, so I go over and fix this guy's, this young guy, you know, maybe mid-20s, something like that. Just start fixing fixing his tire, change his tire for him. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm just talking to him. It's not, you know, these things aren't weird. These are natural things. You, you just, you, you get comfortable. Like, this is comfortable. And do I, seem, do I seem awkward to you right now? No, it's not awkward. It's natural. It's, it's, no, it's supernatural, but it's very natural to be supernatural when you have the divine, not by nature and you let the anointing of God come on you. So I'm just changing the tire, man. I feel the presence of the Lord. I'm just like, man, so what do you do? You're in school, you know? And uh, he's like, I was at school, but I couldn't anymore because, uh, you know, uh, I got some sickness, some, something on him. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I said, well, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I go around everywhere spreading the good news, laying hands on the sick, and they recover. So when I'm done here, I'll pray for you, and we'll take care of that. And uh, he's like, okay. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm changing the guy's tire. Even if he just hey, was an atheist, didn't he? he would be like, okay, you know, whatever. But So I changed the guy's tire, and, then I'm, I'm done, and I'm, I, meet, I talk to the guy. I think his name is Brandon. And um, I just begin to minister and lay hands on him. I curse that sickness in the root, at the root. Command it to come off of me in the name of Jesus. And I think it was fibromyalgia. Cursed fibromyalgia. Told it to obey me in the name of Jesus. Commanded to leave his body. That Jesus loved him, had an awesome plan for his life. Mm. Preached the gospel to him. Prayed for him. Prayed with him. Awesome. Everywhere we go. I get back to the car. The guy working on the car, man, I just, the anointing's still on me. Now the anointing's on me to minister. It's there. And so the guy just got done working with the car. His name was Lewis. I'm like, hey, Lewis. I said, Lewis, do you need a miracle, Lewis? Need a miracle? He's looking at me like, what do you mean I mean a miracle? Lord will take over your tongue. You'll say stuff you don't normally say, you know. I say, Lewis, do you need a miracle? I'm like, in your family, you need a miracle in your body. Do you need a miracle? See, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I go around spreading the good news, setting the oppressed free, said taking people out of the prisons. I said, what do you need, man? What do you need? And um, he's just looking at me. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, I think everything's good, man. I think everything's good. I said, all right. I'm going to pray for you. Jesus, reveal yourself to Lewis. Reveal yourself that you're the only way, that you're the son of the living God, that all he has to do is cry out to you. And you'll come and you'll wash him in your blood. You'll cleanse him from all his sins so he can know you, Father. He can have fellowship. And you just start to preach. You start Because it's, it's on you. It's on you. It'll come on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Everywhere you go, the river of God will flow. Everywhere you go, the spirit of God 
will be on you ready to minister. I love what Pastor Mark was. Man, I, when Pastor Mark says something, man, I understand it's from heaven. I understand. There's a lot of preachers out there who've got to figure out something to preach for next Sunday, okay? But that's not our pastor. Our pastor's got a river. He's got a relationship with the Lord, and we get to participate and, and, and be equipped and, and be filled with his beautiful relationship with the Lord. That is a very natural, that is a very real and very awesome thing. And so we minister the very same way, the same way. But the other day, he, um, he, was, uh, he was talking about um, something that, Lord, bring it back to my memory. Um, it, was, uh, it was awesome. I'm sure whatever it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It was good, though. It was good. But the Lord will... Lord will call you, he, he's called us all to this place where flowing in the Holy Ghost becomes real natural, becomes real simple. Like, man, I mean, now it's more, now what I'm praying for, the other day I'm in prayer, now what I'm praying for is, Lord, cause me to, cause me to know the end of a thing from the beginning, oh God. Cause me to know, because you'll be, and now, because you get in the anointing, you've been to flow in the Holy Ghost, the Lord starts word using word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, you begin to see things. Now you need wisdom. You know, I've been having this dialogue back and forth with Pastor Mark over the last couple of weeks on the email, and just talking about word of wisdom and word of knowledge and some of these things. And, you know, in the simplest form, the word of knowledge is God's knowledge. The word of wisdom, it's God's wisdom. You know, anybody can get knowledge, but knowledge in and of itself doesn't really do anything for you if you have no idea how to apply wisdom to it, if you don't know how to apply it. You can go and get educated all you want, but if you don't know what to do with all that, it's what a waste, right? So God will come with his knowledge. And so God uses me word of knowledge a lot. I'll see things on people. I'll see, I'll see all this word of knowledge taking place. And now I'm pressing in for the word of wisdom. Because uh, sometimes I'm learning that I'm not supposed to say something. I'm not supposed to say it when I see it. God's just showing it to me so I can pray. You know, it's not, it's just, you know, at first when you start flowing the Holy Ghost, it's just all of a sudden there's gifts and you're just like, oh, I see this and I see that because it's exciting and it's happening all around you. And then God starts moving into a place of this word of wisdom where you can start applying these things properly, better. But it's just like tongues and interpretation. You start somewhere, you start there, you start now, God's going to teach you and take you to the next thing. And, 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 and that's the thing with flowing the Holy Ghost and what God wants to do with everybody's lives here. You don't let fear holding you back. Fear will hold you back from step two. Sometimes it's easy to do step one. If step one for you was only standing up and coming here and grabbing a microphone, most people could press past the fear to do just that. But it's not just that. It's the next step. What do I do when I get the microphone? Then what do I do? And that right there is a relationship with God. That right there is a boldness and a confidence and something God is just going to have to teach you and show you. He's going to have to show you how to do it but you just get bold, you just get confident, you get ready for a good rebuke if you need it, and that's fine, and we say amen. Because we can have the word of the Lord, we can have the knowledge, but be wrong on the timing. We can be wrong on that, on the wisdom part of it, it says, no, not now, that's not the time for that. You know, whatever it is, you get a word from the Lord. You come up and you give him to flow, flow in the Holy Ghost. There's a time in the service, and God will begin to teach you, He'll begin to give you wisdom, and show you how to do that. He'll show you what the Spirit of God is doing. You'll be in the flow. It won't be some other thing that's jumping in the middle of it and making a big splash. It's like well, all the attention goes to something that's other than what Jesus was already doing. Everything is going to be with the flow of the Holy Ghost. God's going somewhere. God's going in a direction. God's moving. And all we want to do is hop right in the middle of that thing. I mean, trying to do our own thing. We're not trying to be seen. We're not trying to look at my gifts and look what God's showing me and any of that other, that other nonsense. We're getting in the flow of the Holy Ghost. We're all going the same direction. We, we want what Jesus is saying. We want what Jesus is doing. God wants to do specific things in any given meeting. He wants to do specific things. Look, when you're out there in the world, what God wants to do is real simple. He wants to get people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and, and make sure they're on their way to heaven. That's real simple. Flow of the Holy Ghost is really simple when you're one of the lost. I don't got to think real hard about what I'm going to preach to the people in Africa on a platform with thousands of people. They need Jesus. They need Jesus. They need to come to the knowledge of Jesus, be saved, have a new heart, have a new spirit, be filled with the Holy Ghost, have the ministry of Jesus. You know, come to them. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. mm 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 Thank you, Jesus. Father, we refuse to let fear hold us back in any way. We, re we refuse fear of the unknown, the I don't know what to do, all those things to hold us back, Father, from moving on in God. We refuse. We refuse to let those things hold us back. For we know that in being filled, and not just a little filled, but being so filled 
that out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouths will speak. Our mouths will speak. I don't concentrate so much. I don't concentrate so much on what I'm going to preach on, what I'm going to minister. But I spend a lot of time making sure I stay full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. So I'm ready in season and out of season. That my cup is always filled and it's always ready to overflow. It's continually overflowing everywhere I go. Ministry was never, I made this video a year or so ago about ministry being overflow. Ministry is that overflow. If you were a cup, if your life was a cup, if your life was a glass, your body, who you are is a glass. You never intended, you weren't created to be a life half full, partially full in God. The Bible says that you're complete in him, that he wants to come and fill you. He who hungers and thirsts gets filled. You're called to be a cup that is full continually, continually overflowing, overflowing continually. And that overflow, that overflow is what we call ministry. That filling feels really good. Now that overflow is how we minister to other people. It's real hard to, it's real hard to minister of a glass, the glass that's half full. It's just hard. You got to really pour, like pour, pour. No, nothing's coming. No, nothing's still coming. No, nothing's still coming out. But if that glass is full, all you got to do is bump into somebody and they're getting all wet. It's simple. It's natural. You know, I love, I love to say that, you know, we've been given the divine nature so that we can do the divine by nature. It becomes natural. We just have to do our part and stay hungry and thirsty and stay filled. God comes to do the filling, but we got a part to play in our hunger and our thirst where it's no longer an option. Where the life and the ministry of Jesus that he's laid up before us is like, that's not an option. I got to have that. That's what I'm called to. That's a life I'm called to live. Then it all becomes real simple. Ministry becomes real simple. Everything in God becomes real simple when you stay that filled. Basically, I, I just get, I get real filled before I preach. And thank God I was filled before I walked in here tonight. Hallelujah. But you just stay real filled so you can walk up there and you're going to pour out of that treasure chest that the Lord put on your heart because it's filled and it's open and it's ready to pour out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, man, I just feel like, I just feel the, I feel the heart of the Father that loves and is so desirous for you to go on with him. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> that he doesn't want anybody stuck. He doesn't want anybody to stay where they are because he's, <laughs> he's created you for far more. You were designed for far more. Your, your actual design, the way he designed you in the spirit was for far more than what you're participating with. <laughs> you're designed as an eternal being. You're eternal. You won't die. Your body will fall off, but you will live forever. People in hell are alive in hell. I mean, we call them dead while they live, however we want to define all that. But they live. You live forever. You're eternal. You will always live. You will always be who you are. You will always be who you are. I love when pastor talks about there's no sanctification in the sepulcher because it makes it really clear that nothing changes. There's not some, some sparkly, magical thing that happens between the time you die and the time you go on to the, to the, to the next life. Nothing happens there. You just cross over. Who you are, the eternal being you are right now, everything you got right now is everything you're going to have when you get there. That, that's, that's it. That's who you are. Nothing magical happens. What do you love now? What do you participate with now? What do you want now? This is where we get it right. This is where we hunger. This is not where we're like, I'm going to press through and do as best I can. To... No. That's about running a race fully. It's running a race to the end. It's running and not letting up. This is the beginning. People think when they retire, it's the end, or they're 80 or not, whatever they do, 90 or whatever they do, I don't know. I'm not, it's not part of my plan. I'm not retired. I'm going to go preach in Mecca somewhere or something when I think I'm too old. I don't know. <laughs> Just get killed for him, man. It's great. We're eternal. We're eternal. You're going to live forever. Well, think about it. This, 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 quantity of time. That's not heaven. It's quality. It's life. It's what he's doing in your spirit. It's what he's maturing in you so that you can go on and rule and reign with him when you leave this earth. Participate with those things now. Be trained up now. Let the life of Jesus be imparted to you now. Begin to rule and reign with him now. Huh. My, my prayers change concerning wealth and riches and what I see in the future and my dreams and my hopes. 
I'm defining all that differently now. I'm saying, Lord, give me the nations for my inheritance and the uttermost parts of the world for my possessions. God wants to give us nations. I stood out and looked at an ocean, at the ocean, at an ocean, the ocean. Look at a lot of oceans. Stood out and looked at the ocean last night. And I looked. (laughs) And all I could see was a sea of people. An ocean of people. Souls, eternal beings. Because I was thinking about Africa, what's about to happen. And I thought to myself about the ocean of people that I'm going to be looking at. And (laughs) I I started to lose it right there looking at the ocean. Thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do when I stand on that platform and in front of all those people, God. But you're overwhelmed with compassion for eternal beings. You know no man after the flesh. You know everyone after the spirit. You don't know yourself. You're not defined by the flesh, by your title. You're defined by the spirit, son of God. Son of God. One who rules and reigns with him in this, in this life and the one that is to come. You begin to find everything differently. Everything needs to be redefined. Otherwise, it's a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste. Talk about being irrelevant. It'll be your life. It won't be relevant to anybody. It won't be, they, won't, they, don't need, they don't need what you have to give them in the natural. They don't, need to, they don't need you to know them after the flesh. They need you to know them after the spirit. For when you start to know them after the spirit, you're going to walk into the room. All the titles are going to go away. What everybody makes, how much money they're making, all that's going to disappear. All that's going to go away. What they're wearing, everything about them will go away, and you'll see an eternal being. You'll see eternity. You'll see eternity when you look at their eyes. You'll see eternity. They'll live forever. They'll live forever. They'll live forever. Where will they live forever? They'll live forever. They'll live forever. The nations call. The nations cry out to us. The nations call. They cry out here in San Diego. They call out out to us. The nations right here, from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, they cry out. From Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, fully preaching the gospel. Right here, going out. They cry out. They cry out. I see every person out there hurting is just crying out, help, help me, help me, help me, help me. Hurting, lost, help me, help me, help me. Well, we can see in a Christian fantasy that just cause, you know, we have a blind eye to all that stuff. Or we, we let the Holy Spirit come and move us so much with compassion. Let him move on us in such a way that it actually causes us to do something proof of our desire and our pursuit. Proof. No more Christian fantasies. We got to get real. We got to get real. God will multiply. God will multiply something if you'll give him something. Maybe it's just a heart that says, God, I got to change. God, I need that. God, I want that. That's a good start. That's good. Something. He wants something. He needs something to multiply. If you're giving nothing, there's nothing to multiply. There's nothing he can add unto you. You gotta give him something. You gotta make one step forward. Man, if you're trying to get out of debt, you know, some people wanted to save all this money and then they can do something. And usually it never happens. You gotta start something. You give five bucks, you give 10, whatever it is. You're trying to get, just do something. Something. It'll at least start a behavior in your life where you're moving forward some way. And God can come and manifest that and, and honor that because He sees you want it. You're desperate. You're gonna do something. You're gonna do something. Nothing. The worst thing you could do is go home and think about this. Leave here and think about it. Don't think about it. Please don't think about it. Be moved by it. Be inspired by it. (laughs) Let something strike your heart that makes you do something. Something. Some pursuit. Makes you leave your chair. Makes it all different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Uh, it's usually part of the service by doing an altar call. <laughs> you got an altar right where you're at. You got an altar right there. You put your heart on that altar. Put your desires on that altar. Put your affections on that altar. You put it all on that altar. You 
put it all on the altar. Let him do something. Let him do something. No options, no longer an option. Just so desperate for change, so unwilling to stay the same. So unwilling to go on to another place in God. Been where you've been way too long to go on with God. The nations call, San Diego calls, your Jerusalem calls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so I believe the word the Holy Spirit has given me is, is tributaries. Okay, when pa Pastor Kelly was talking about talking about the river. And too, too long we've operated uh, in the church under the model of, uh, of a stream of the, of the river from the, through the man of God. And we've all come and we, we even use the analogy to come and plug in to the supply. And we plug in and then we allow that, you know, to a certain degree, we allow that certain, that supply to, to flow out through us into our lives and into our families and into our ministries and things like that. But I think that's, I think that this, I feel like it's a wrong model. I mean, the analogy is still good. I'm not saying it's not good. We do have to plug in, but in reality, reality, the wellspring, the, well, <laughs> the wellspring has been given to each one of us. And every single one of us is supposed to be a source of that wellspring. Then it bubbles up and it bubbles up and in the stream may be small, but that it's, it functions as a tributary. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know that everyone knows what that is, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a bunch of little rivers that come into a big river. So the river that is the end time move of the Holy Spirit, that river that's supposed to be the overwhelming force, that river that turns into, you know, the, into the Amazon, that turns, that runs down the Iguazu Falls, those, those rivers, that, that those terrain changing and continent shaping rivers are a combination of many smaller rivers, of many, every river, every river allowing the wellspring to come up and just flow through them and come and combine and come alongside of the big river and jump in and, and contribute, contribute, you know? It doesn't necessarily mean that you have the microphone or anything like that, but your faith and your prayer and your power and that power that he's giving you contributing to the move of God. Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's spot on. That's exactly. Pastor was talking about the other night. All these rivers converge. They converge into this giant, this giant, this just, this giant flow. That's it. No, that's it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's it. We've all been given a river. You know, we all been given before, long before I had a microphone, man. I was sitting right here on that front row, learning how to get into the river, learning, learning how to let my river converge with the the mighty river that's flowing up here by the Holy Ghost. I'd learn how to convert. I'd learn how to converge with that river. I would learn how to. I would learn how. We call it being one. We call the church coming together. You know, at one point I would see, I would see like, you know, everybody worshiping, and it was like this giant, like incense, and it was like, you know, when you see a, a smoke that kind of goes up like that, and it has, you know, it, it's a stream of smoke, and I would look at all these people worshiping, and it was like I would see this stream of smoke. But it was everybody, one end of it was on this side and the other end was on this side. And it would all come up together. And I watched Father just receiving this offering. Everything about God is going to come from that place of oneness. I, I, I think the, the river analogy is perfect that the, that the Lord gave us. I mean, he gave it to us, so it's perfect. Hallelujah. Uh, but that's the, way, that's the way it works. You learn how to hop into the river. You learn how to hop into the flow uh, of what's going on, as it were, right here. You know, if Pastor Mark's praying, I'm praying. If he's shouting, I'm shouting. If he's dancing, I'm dancing. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook up with that. So that's where I learned how to flow in the Holy Ghost. That's where I learned how. Follow, follow my pastor. Hallelujah. It's good. It's good. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. It's unstoppable. It's an unstoppable flow. It's an unstoppable river. It can't be contained. It can't be shut up. Overwhelming, unstoppable, incontainable river that he's put on the inside of you. And Jesus defined, he made clear who gets it. He said in John 7, 37, the great day of the feast, he stood and he cleared and he cried, all who thirst, let him come to me. All who thirst. He didn't say all. He said all who thirst. It's a big difference. Big difference. Not everyone will get it. 
thirsty and hungry. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You get real comfortable in his anointing. You get real comfortable being a, alone with Jesus in a public place. You get real comfortable. Jesus. Got to learn how to get real comfortable with him in a private place first. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus. Jesus. So you go on right now and you just make some decisions in your heart. You just go on and make some choices right now. Some real choices, not... No, don't think, don't think about it. Make some choices. Make some decisions. And then do something. And begin to move. Begin to move in God. Begin to move. Begin to move in the church. Begin to move outside of the church. Begin to move in God. Be overwhelmed. Be consumed. Be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Just be possessed by him. Just be possessed. Possession. Purchased. Possession. Just be possessed. Just be possessed. Go on and let him possess you. Just let him possess you. You've been bought. You've been purchased. You're his possession. Just be possessed. Understand that you're possessed. Just understand, you're possessed. Be possessed with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be overwhelmed with the Holy Ghost. Ecstasy yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. Ecstasy yourself in Him. Enjoy His pleasures forevermore. Find your ecstasy, your pleasure, everything that you crave, everything that you desire. If you don't live, you don't dwell, you don't enjoy, you don't find your home there, it's going to be really poor salesmanship when you try to tell somebody about Jesus. It's going to be words. It's going to be have to, supposed to's. Just let him overwhelm you. Let him move on you. Let him move in you. Let him move in you. Let him move on you. Let him move in you. Or not, or you could stay the same. Or you could stay the same. Maybe that's what, maybe that, maybe that's what, I don't know, maybe that's what people want to stay the same. Does that, the, maybe people, maybe people are good. Maybe everybody's good. Maybe, maybe everybody wants to stay the same. Maybe it's like, this is, they're good till Jesus comes back, just like this. Maybe, it, maybe that's, Maybe that's what's it, what it is. Everybody's good. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm good, man. I, I'm, everything's fine. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. That's me provoking you right there. That's me provoking you a little bit. If you know that bliss awaits you 24 hours a day, bliss, not sleep, not whatever your favorite food is, bliss awaits you continually 24 hours a day. Bliss, pleasures, ecstasies in God. You know that these things are available and made for you. Why wouldn't you participate with them every day? Why not be filled to overflowing? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not be filled? Why not? Why not? Why not? Be filled, just filled, just filled. So you can jump into this thing the right way. Filled. 
There's no other right way than to be filled. Everything else is out of context. Everything else is irrelevant. Everything is extra biblical. Only, the only proper context for the reading the Bible is being filled. Understanding it as a filled person. Under, you won't understand it. You won't understand it. You won't get it. You've got to be filled. You've got to be filled. You've got to be hungry. You've got to be thirsty. You have to be. You've got to stir yourself up in the Holy Ghost. You've got to build yourself up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You've got to devour the word. Your words are found that I did eat them. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips he shall be filled. You've got to open your mouth. You've got to meditate on the word. Meditate to mutter. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but I meditate on it day and night that I may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then I shall make my way prosperous and have success. Prerequisites, prerequisites to the word of God, prerequisites to the life of Jesus, prerequisites to having everything that Jesus has made available for you, prerequisites, hunger, thirst, desire, pursuit. The most, I'm going to close here. I'm going to close. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, it's funny. I'm telling you, the anointing teaches you all things. As soon as I, I, that happens all the time, as soon as I say in a meeting, I'm going to close, everybody gets relaxed. And then they start drinking <laughs> because they're relaxed. Now they're like, like oh, I got to drink. Mm, I got to drink. I got to be hungry. I got to be thirsty. They relax, then everybody starts getting filled. <laughs> happens over and over and over. So just relax. I'm closing. I'm finished. I'm finishing. Well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mighty God. It's really all so easy. It's really all so simple. It's easy. It's not hard. It's just, it's simple. Hunger, he who hungers and thirsts is filled. I know that's in the context of righteousness. Nonetheless, he who hungers and thirsts is filled. All who thirst, all who thirst, I give you a wellspring. Hunger, thirst, desire. Hallelujah. What I was going to say before you started drinking and interrupting my, my message. Oh, that's a good interruption. Hallelujah. It's a, I want you to begin to train yourself in the meeting, okay? Train yourself in the meeting. Because I, I know, I sit in the meeting too. You'll feel this tired come upon you. You'll feel this opportunity to check out of the meeting. You'll feel an opportunity that's like, mm, I could go this direction real easy. I'm ready for it to be over now. I'm just being honest, just being real, okay? But in that moment, if you will talk to yourself and you begin to say, self, this is about eternity. This is about eternal things. What do I have to go to? I, I, can, I, I talk to myself a lot, a lot, have for years. I was number one minister in my life, preaching to me, long time, commanding myself, talking to myself. Self, what are you thinking right now? What, you're tired? Oh, you're tired? You want to go home and sleep, self? That's what you want to do? So God's speaking. Yeah, I believe God's speaking, but, but you're going to check out. That's what you're going to do, self? Okay, okay, you know, you I would talk to myself like that. I'd just get a little precocious with myself, just a little snarky with myself. I think you got to. You kind of got to get real with yourself, or you just... Retreat within yourself, retreat within your own thoughts, think about it for a while, check out. Natural mind is enmity against God. Uh, you can go there if you want. <laughs> I'm going to pass, man. I'm going to stir myself up in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to command myself. I'm going to speak to myself. When I start getting tired and say, end of the service, look, the revivalists for years have said revival is born after midnight. Yeah. For years. Because by then, the hungry and thirsty are there. The ones who have plugged in and decided not to check out, it's not been an option anymore, have decided, yeah. I'm going, I'm touching heaven. And then God explodes in a place yeah. over and over and over and over. So begin to train yourself. Because as, as, as the preachers, as the preachers, we get to stand up here and then we feel that. I feel it. Somebody's tired. Somebody wants to go home. Somebody has other things to do. Somebody needs to do this. Somebody needs to do that. And so... I've, I've learned how to ignore it in some way, just ignore it and just listen to the Spirit of God. But at first, I'd have to address it. Otherwise, it would take me prisoner. 
And so the rest of the time I'd hear a tick, 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 tick. They want to go, they want to go, they want to go. So at first I'd be like, man, some of you just want to go home and God's here. I'd have to address it somehow. I'd have to address it or it would take me prisoner. Now I just ignore it. I'm just like, whatever. God's more important. What God says goes. You can just do whatever, whatever. You got to leave, leave. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We're actually going to make a difference for eternity. You can do whatever you want to do. So, close with this. Just begin to train yourself in the meeting. Begin to train yourself. When you get tired, when you feel tired, come on. To say, tell yourself, I'm not an animal. That's, that's good. That's good. I, begin to tell yourself those kind of things. I, I, I'm not an animal. I can control myself. I can Proverbs 16, 32 myself. He who rules the spirit is better than he who takes a city. I can have rule over my spirit. It, later on, it says he who doesn't rule the spirit is like a city with broken down walls. Anything can come in and out. Begin to train yourself. So anything didn't come in and out. Tired comes in and out. It leads me here. It leads me there. Tired's leading me here. Now this is leading me here. Nonsense. Rule yourself. Rule yourself. Take control. Take command over yourself by the Holy Ghost. Stir yourself up in God. Tell yourself eternity's on the line. Tell yourself if you got to watch another St. Jude's Hospital uh, commercial of children, you're going to die. Tell yourself these things. Command yourself. Tell yourself the life of Jesus is waiting. What am I doing with my life? Tell yourself. Stir yourself up. Do it. Do it in the meeting especially where you're perfected. So you're going to have some stamina in the Holy Ghost. God can do something where that revival born after midnight doesn't have to take till midnight because everybody comes in hungry and thirsty for more of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, from this moment forward that none of us stop short of such a glory. None of us stop short of all heaven that's been made available for us. That we stop being so content where we are with such menial things, such human things, such earthly things. We stop being so content with them, Father, but a radical, insatiable hunger would just stir and burn in us. And if we don't feel it, we'd cry out until it was there. We cry out until we're so hungry for more of you, God. We're so thirsty for more of you, God. We become that person, that thirsty man, that thirsty woman, that hungry one, that one that tears up a roof, that one that presses into the crowd, that one that jumps over the boat and steps out on the water, that we become those people, Father, that we become that, God. Father, move in us, that we don't stop short of such a glory, such a life that we've been called to, oh God, that we press in. So we all come to the measure of the maturity of the fullness of Christ Jesus. A perfect man. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Hallelujah. 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 Come and fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows. Come and fill my cup, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Come and fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows. Come and fill my cup, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Come and fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows. Come and fill my cup, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Mm -mm -mm. Cause I'm in all, I'm in all of you. I'm in all, I'm in all, it all you do, Lord. I'm in awe, I'm in awe of who you are. Mm -hmm. 
I'm in awe, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe, I'm in awe in all you do, Lord. I'm in awe, I'm in awe of who you are. Mm-mm-mm. I'm in awe, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe, I'm in awe in all you do, Lord. I'm in awe, I'm in awe at who you are. Come and fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows. Come and fill my cup, Lord, with a Holy Ghost. Come and fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows. Come and fill my cup, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Come and fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows. Come and fill my cup, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. present he was. If you only knew how real he was right now, right here, right now, right here. If you only knew how real that he would so come and manifest and reveal himself to you so you could see him. Everything would change. Everything would change. So real. Hallelujah. Fill every heart.
God. Well, amen. If I begin to just keep waiting on the Lord, I start operating in the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and prophecy. And, and uh, but I think, uh, I think we're doing what we need to be doing right now. It's me learning how to apply wisdom to knowledge. I know what God's doing tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So much is available, guys. So the Lord's made so much available to us. If we'd only begin to give ourselves to it. Hallelujah. It's been an awesome number of months for me learning a lot of that. So much is available that we'll go after it. We'll begin to step out and begin to move, just begin to move in God. And God will not only back us up, but he will be in front of us and around us and in us and on us. And you'll lose your entire life in him. It'll be awesome. Awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Is everybody blessed? Filled? Stirred? Changed? Encouraged? Provoked? Good. Please don't go be the same. Please don't go think about it. 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 I feel that, man. Don't go think about it. Go do something with it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.